Hello, and thank you for accessing our mini session, Top 5 Configuration Tips for Concur Expense Professional in 15 Minutes. This session is part of our Timely Topics Education Series, which includes education and resources designed to speak to the current business environment. I'm your host, Naomi, and I have a few quick items to review before we get started. First, everything you see on your screen is movable and resizable using the arrows in the corners. If you have any questions about today's content, click on the Q&A widget that can be found at the bottom of your screen, and we'll be sure to get back to you via email. We also have additional resources and links to support today's session in the Resources widget that looks like a folder, so be sure to check that out. And finally, to help guide us on future topics, we ask that you complete a quick survey at the close of the session. You can find it in the widget that looks like a clipboard. Now that that's out of the way, I'd like to hand it off to our speaker for today's mini session, Sean McGuire. Sean? Thank you. Hello, I'm Sean McGuire, and I'm a Principal Consultant at SAP Concur, and I'll be walking you through the top 5 and 15 today. Okay, let's dig in and talk about how we can help you with the top 5 configuration tips for the professional edition of Concur Expense. When you're tasked with managing spending, the solutions that help you manage spending, there's never a shortage of things to do, and keeping up with the seemingly endless day-to-day -to -day to do's can keep you away from evaluating your spending policies, your solution, your overall strategy, and missed opportunities to improve and refine the process you have in place. We talk to hundreds of customers every week, and we've seen a lot, a lot of good ideas and a lot of relatively simple things that often get overlooked. So in the next few minutes, we'll walk through a few tips that are easy to implement and can bring immediate value to you and your program, including how to focus audit rules to deliver the most impact, balance workflow simplicity with oversight, make sure expense types are working, not overworking, use timeouts to your advantage, take advantage of ready-made training. Discretion may be the better form of valor, but it's also the best approach to audit rules. It's very easy to keep adding and adding audit rules to address problems as they arise. But remember, every audit rule is an opportunity to slow down the process and frustrate the end user. They absolutely have their place, but they should be used selectively, and only when the need and purpose are well established and clear. So take a closer look at all of your audit rules to see what's actually in use, what's necessary and what can go. Any unnecessarily rule can affect productivity, productivity adoption, and adoption, so don't be afraid to trim the list. But at the same time, there are some important audit rules that many customers overlook. For example, the duplicate transaction check. This is a simple audit rule that does just what it says. It checks for duplicate transactions to avoid accidental dual entries that lead to double payments at worst and extra oversight and administration time by approvers and AP at best. Plus, if you have expenses and are getting a data feed directly from your corporate card provider, this rule is extra useful, as employees often snap a photo of a receipt, add it to their expense report, and forget to merge it with the charge from their corporate card. The receipt image required. Again, this, just as it sounds, this rule makes sure users add an image of a receipt within the, pay within the parameters you've set. Nobody has to chase down receipts after the fact, and you automatically reinforce the receipt rule you have in place. Travel payment type. This rule ensures that each employee has the correct payment type for travel expenses, air, car, and hotel. Employees can confuse travel segments with card transactions, causing duplicate entries, and this rule can help eliminate that. Unsubmitted card transactions with aging. What this lengthy name means is the system will stop a user from submitting cash expenses if they have old, unsubmitted card charges. It helps make sure that their expense reports are up to date with their card transactions. Now let's take a minute to talk about process and workflow. Process is incredibly important, of course. But just like audit rules, too much process can do more harm than good, and not enough can open you up to potential risks. It's a good idea to take another look at your process to make sure each step has a specific purpose. Make sure there are no unnecessary parts of the process to trip your people up or slow down the process. Next, examine your workflow closely to make sure you're not hanging on to remnants of a paper-based process. Steps that used to need that don't have a place anymore. And finally, one mistake we often see clients make is using the workflow to do a job reporting can handle. 
So if someone near the top of the org chart needs to see what expense reports exceed a certain level, but they're not the approver, for example, use a report to do that. Don't slow down the process with an extra workflow step. If you're looking for a point of comparison, here are a couple of good starting points. The first one is a default workflow in Concur. That goes from employee to manager to the back office. The second one is for organizations that need a couple additional layers of approval. You can see those layers here, but remember, not all of these steps will be necessary for each expense report. Once it is limit approved, the workflow moves into the payment process. These are good frames of reference as you determine what's best for your organization. Our next topic is expense types. And this is where we often see customers overthink again, overcomplicate things. By using standard expense types in conjunction with corporate card feed, you'll make creating expense reports easier for users to complete. And more expense types does not necessarily mean more clarity. If users have 200 expense types to sort through, they're more likely to make mistakes, either accidentally or deliberately, because they're overwhelmed. If users have fewer expense types to sort through, the entire process becomes more straightforward and easier to complete. Reporting gets easier for you as well. If you have fewer categories to evaluate and choose from, you can build more comprehensive reports faster. Here are a couple of good rules to remember. If you're not going to report on it, you don't need it. If you're not going to parse your spending by a given category, you likely don't need the category. If different, ex if different types of spending have the same account code in your GL, they can likely have the same expense type. Think about meals, for example. If you have a single account code for meals, you don't need different expense types for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Also, it's important to note, you can have one expense type with drop-down details if you need them. For example, you can have parking, tolls, etc., all under ground transportation. Finally, the default expense types that are in place are a great place to start. There is data mapping and standard reports built around those expense types. Remember, you can rename them if you want as well, but still keep the standard expense types. So what's reasonable and what's, well, overkill? This is a nice, simple, but complete list of expense types. See how there are not too many? And you can see all of them in one screen. They're easy to find and easy to understand. Now look at this list. You can see the user can't even see them all without scrolling. And you can see how confusing it is to make the right choice. The bottom line is, make it as simple as you can while giving the control and insight the spending you need. Delays are the enemy of an expense report process, but they're also understandable. Your employees are busy. They have a long set of to-dos before expense reports hit their list. And those reviewing and approving are managers and team leaders that are often the most overwhelmed. The good news is you can configure a solution to help. And that brings us to our fourth point. You can adjust the system to remind and motivate managers to approve reports in a timely manner. Simple email reminders can nudge managers along to approve what they need to approve. But before we get to the emails, we recommend setting a timeout. So if a manager has an approved or submitted expense report in a certain number of days, the system will automatically time out the report and send it to the approver's approver. But don't go crazy with it. Keep it to a reasonable time. The most common we see are 7, 10, or 14 days. And then set email reminders based on your timeout time frame to remind and incent approvers. Cut the timeout in half and send a reminder at the midway point. If you have a 10-day timeout, send a 5-day reminder. But we also recommend adding a reminder on the last day and ensuring they know what the next step is. You'll also see a lot of benefits by taking these steps to nudge the reports along. Employees will get their expense reports approved on a timely basis without bugging the managers. Admins won't have to chase managers to approve reports. You'll get the spending data you need faster so you can more effectively manage budgets and accruals. Our last point is around training. You may not remember, and many customers don't, that there is a training site built into your Concur Expense Solution. And you can configure this site to share the information you want, which can help onboard new employees and answer typical questions from employees. 
it's a great way to save employees time and reduce questions you and your IT team have to handle. Again, you can use it for new employees, use it when new features or policy changes are added, or use it as a refresher on important topics. It starts with using the company notes section that all employees see when they hit the Concur site. It's a great way to deliver targeted messages that let them know about new features or new information available to them. On the training site, employees can easily access all kinds of information, training videos, guides, and FAQs that are just all click away. And remember, you can configure this site any way you want. As an administrator, you can go in and turn things on or off. You can pick and choose what topics and trainings show up. As we wrap up, remember these five simple tips have come from hundreds of customer conversations. They're easy tweaks that can help your program stay strong and help you effectively manage spending while keeping users satisfied and supported. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sean. If you'd like to check out additional resources available within the Timely Topics Education Series, you can click through the link that can be found in the Resources widget. And as a final reminder, please be sure to complete the survey before you go. Thanks so much for joining us.